and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Well, today in the show, coming out of a wet year, or for that matter, still in a wet year, there is a lot of talk about tiling and improving drainage. So we want to talk about some of the lessons we've learned with tiling over the years. Well, one of the big things, Brian, is not just to uh, allow the roots to survive, but to allow all those soil microbes to survive because the natural type products that farmers are applying to enhance soil microbiology are really gaining some steam. We're going to talk about some of those products that are showing some promise today. We've got a tough weed of the week that affects a lot of fields all around the United States and all around the world coming up later in the show. We've got our iron talk as well, but first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Out here, great yield starts with great weed control. That's why I choose the Roundup Ready Extend crop system, the system that makes the difference. Because only I know what it takes out here. Yields what it's all for. But keeping my fields clean all season, that's what it's all about. This is my field. Now for our basics time today, we're going to discuss a topic, uh, cover crops, that you're probably hearing a lot about. And you may be wondering just exactly what is a cover crop? When we say crop in general, that really could be anything. We're standing in a cornfield, it could be soybeans, it could be wheat, it could be anything. Any plant can be a crop. But what we talk about with cover crop is we're not really, as farmers, raising that crop to make money. And you say, what? Why would you raise a crop not to make money? Not immediately anyway. We're not looking at, hey, we're going to harvest grain and sell it to make some profit out here. What we're looking at is what can we grow in a field to hold the soil in place, to really help the soil microbiology and everything else because we just weren't able to get a crop in at this point. Or, hey, there's still a little bit of growing season left. We don't have enough time to raise a crop, but we can still do something healthy for our soil. So the reason why you're hearing so much about that here in 2019 is simply this. There were more unplanted acres this spring than I think we've ever had in the United States. It was terrible because of all the flooding that occurred. So what happened is farmers were able to, in many cases, collect prevent plant insurance. They had insurance. If they couldn't plant the crops, they collected that money. So now they can't raise a crop the rest of the year, but they want something growing on that soil. Like Darren said, just to hold the soil down, reduce erosion, prevent weeds, and keep the soil life going so next year's crop turns out pretty good. So as you can imagine, if farmers aren't going to actually make any money this year putting a cover crop out there, they're probably not going to spend a huge amount of money. And it, right. what we'll find many times is farmers will spend $5 an acre to $15 or $20 an acre on the high side, depending on what you're going to get. Now, some of the reasons that farmers may go with a higher dollar cover crop is looking at, well, what am I going to plant out there? Maybe I'll plant a legume that could produce some nitrogen and leave a little bit more nitrogen fertilizer in the soil for next year's wheat or next year's corn crop. Or maybe I'll raise some radishes and turnips in the mix because radishes and turnips go down in the ground, they expand when they're in the ground, and they bust up compaction for farmers. So that's a good thing going forward. Depending on what the farmer's goals are for that soil, maybe it's just, hey, I need something growing out there to suck up some of this extra moisture from this year, or maybe it's, I'm in a dry area and I wanna protect the moisture that's out in the field. There are a wide variety of different cover crops that farmers may potentially plant. We've got a resource at agphd.com where we show a bunch of different cover crops and what the benefits and potential drawbacks may be. So for farmers, our biggest couple pieces of advice is number one, don't spend too much money. This is a cover crop that's not gonna make you money in the short term. And then the next thing is have a blend. A lot of times we're talking about a minimum of two different crops out there, but some people will raise five, six different crops all at the same time, just to get as much diversity out there as possible. Well, one thing you will never want to plant as a cover crop is our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to get rid of this tough weed coming up later in the show. Your planter is the single most important piece of equipment on your farm. Because without a uniform stand, you can't reach maximum yield. That's why Harvest International set out to design a planter that takes advantage of the newest innovations in planter technology. 
Built tough for high speed and integrated with the latest precision enhancements, Harvest International planters ensure every seed you plant today puts more in your bin at harvest. Harvest International, planting the future. Ideal for herbicide applications, the Ultra Low Drift's large air inducted droplets were designed to eliminate driftable fines without sacrificing coverage. Its thick three-dimensional pattern creates multiple angles for the spray to cover the target. Hypro, helping you spray better. You're invited to attend the free Ag PhD Field Day, Thursday, July 25th. Hi, I'm Darren Hefty. For 2019, we have even more valuable information for your farm. This year, we feature guided tours of more than 100 Ag PhD field trials, highlighting the latest in technology, seed, crop protection, and fertilizer. Plus, you can see high yield panels with 15 yield champions in corn, soybeans, wheat, barley, milo, and sunflowers. And see the plots that each of those farmers are managing right here on our site. Please register at agphd.com. No two seasons are the same. Each brings its own set of challenges. And you've seen a few. So many threats, and not one single thing can be taken for granted. In the fight against the unpredictable, the Acceleron portfolio provides coverage on four fronts. Fungicides, insecticides, nematicides, and bioenhancers. Rise stronger with one simple decision. Invisible, invasive, underestimated, nematodes are stealing over 10% of yields, and current protection methods aren't enough. But a breakthrough seed treatment technology controls nematodes when they attack. Now offering Nemastrike technology. It provides broad spectrum control from the start and stays in the root zone as plants grow. Take back your bushels with Nemastrike technology. Strike where nematodes attack. There are a lot of steps to having a perfect season. Don't let your fertilizer plan be the step that trips you up. No matter when you apply fertilizer, no matter how, AgroLiquid has the experts and the products that'll help you move closer to your target and hit the bullseye. AgroLiquid moves you closer to your target. 2019 is going to go down as one of the wettest springs ever. So today we want to talk just a little about tiling, how it's installed, where it's installed, how to make that work the best, and how it can pay for your farm. I think on the Ag PhD radio program this year, we've probably never had as many calls about drainage tile or comments about drainage tile from farmers that say, you know what, I got two of my fields planted this year. Those are the ones I have tile on. This is a great opportunity year. If you had fields that you didn't get planted or even little areas out in the fields that you didn't get planted, there's really only one reason. It's water. And if we can control where that water table is and just understand what tile does, we're gonna be way better off. The first thing that a lot of people bring up to me is, well, NRCS doesn't want me to tile. That's a bunch of nonsense. They do want you to tile. Okay, if you look at the stated goals of when this was originally formed. Keep in mind, NRCS started as the Soil Erosion Service, and soil erosion is dramatically reduced when you put tile in the ground. There were programs back in the 1970s from the ASCS to help farmers put tile in the ground. NRCS absolutely wants you to tile. The next thing people will say is, well, NRCS uh, may come out and, and do a wetland determination, but they haven't been out there yet. Well, let's not forget, you still get all your government payments until they prove that you drained a wetland. So if it's not a wetland, there's no problem with tiling it, okay? As long as you are positive, that is not a wetland. So a lot of people, to be on the safe side, they get their determination done first. There's nothing requiring you to get the determination done first, though. When you think about putting drainage tile in the soil, what we're really trying to do is manage that water table. And I look at it this way. We're not just managing water, we're really managing oxygen. What we want to do is, let's just say we're putting a drainage tile line in at three feet deep. Well, we want to control how much oxygen there is in those top three feet. We want to make sure it's at least 25% of the profile. That's the real reason that we're putting drainage tile in. There are also people who will say, well, you're gonna pollute the environment, you're gonna flood the environment. Both statements are completely ridiculous. When water has to go through the soil, it gets filtered out. That water coming out of tile lines is usually quite clean. The only thing it may have a little more of is nitrate, but farmers don't wanna lose nitrate. If we just simply manage nitrogen well, that's not a big issue. 
The other thing in terms of flooding, no. You're going to have reduced flooding and here's the reason why. Because tile lines are set up typically for a quarter inch, a third of an inch, a half inch drainage coefficient. Okay, if you get, let's say, a three inch rain and you have your ground that's completely saturated because there's no tile out there, okay, if you have a half inch drainage coefficient, it would take six days for three inches to slowly go out of that field. So it's absolutely reduced flooding and it's absolutely cleaner water when you put tile in the ground. Now for farmers, you may say, well, the big advantage, it's yield, right? Yeah, yield is, is a really nice component. It's the one that pays you, but think about 2019. Think about your fields that you didn't have enough tile in or didn't have any tile in. You were getting stuck out there. You were having issues. You were going back into those fields several times trying to plant because, well, part of the field's ready, but part of the field's not. And there are all those other things that you may not see that right away as, hey, I can just put a check in my pocket, but it's all those checks that you don't have to write that are a really nice thing about tile as well. The two big questions we get from installers are these. How deep should I go and how close together should the tile lines be? What you want to use is the Ag PhD drainage calculator that will help you a little bit with the tile spacing question and in terms of how much tile you need overall. But I just say this, if you're in an area that normally gets lots of rainfall, you probably want to have the tile lines a little bit deeper so you have more capacity when you do get rain. If you're in a dry area like we are, we like keeping the tile lines relatively relatively shallow, two and a half, three feet, that's good enough. In terms of spacing, the heavier the ground, the closer together the lines need to be. If you've got a cation exchange capacity of 10, you can probably be at 50, 70, 80 foot spacings. If you've got a cation exchange capacity of 30, you probably need to be down to 25 or 30 foot spacings. The last thing I want to discuss is just comparing using drainage tile below the surface of the ground versus surface drainage because this year there were a lot of guys, hey, I got a pond out there, I need to do a little surface drainage or some land shaping to get that to run away and that's nice for the above ground water management but it also does lead to a little more flooding because all that water is going to hit uh, a river or a stream that much faster. And more and erosion. And it doesn't do anything for that oxygen that we're trying to control beneath the ground. So the problem is you didn't really fix the problem with the above ground drainage. The water table coming up is the real issue. That's why you use tile. And also just keep in mind, the tile doesn't run if the water table is below the level of the tile line. So like on our farm, if my water table is below three feet, tile line never runs, it's awesome. But in those circumstances, like here in 2019 in the spring, where the water table came above three feet, it got to two foot depth or one foot depth, now my tile line runs. Well, there's a lot to know and understand about tile, but the simple fact is it's going to help you improve your yield and improve your soil microbial life, plus it's a good thing for the environment. One other thing that's good for the environment is raising a great crop, and you can do that by controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed later in the show. Tough, precise, efficient. Strip tillage with the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm. Learn more at soilwarrior.com slash agphd. In 1949, Morton Buildings constructed our first machine storage building to establish our bond with the farming community. Since then, our relationship has grown and so have our product offerings. From the smallest specialized operation to the largest agricultural enterprise, we understand the needs of your business and continue to evolve to meet industry demands. Plus, when you build a Morton building, you're backed by the strongest warranty in the business. To learn more about the Morton Advantage, visit mortonbuildings.com. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us because Case IH offered the first five axle design to give you more power to the ground, less berming and compaction, all to help you be more productive. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt and a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. 
That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. There are a lot of steps to having a perfect season. Don't let your fertilizer plan be the step that trips you up. No matter when you apply fertilizer, no matter how, AgroLiquid has the experts and the products that'll help you move closer to your target and hit the bullseye. AgroLiquid moves you closer to your target. Today we're going to talk about some of the newer natural type products that, that we're utilizing on our farm because we get so many questions all the time. Hey, you guys talk about this whole new era of agriculture where there's all these microbials that, that are getting used, but we don't really know which specific products you're talking about. And we don't want to recommend things that, oh, everybody should do this in every acre. But we're going to talk about some of these products today that we're using, that we're really seeing some good promise. We're also going to talk about some of the products that we're just starting to try that we're pretty excited about too. The big thing is a lot of people will say, oh, biologicals, that's, as our dad would term it, foo-foo dust or snake oil. And, oh, that stuff can't possibly pay. But if you take a look over the last five, six years, where have a lot of the big companies invested their money? I don't care if it's BSF, Bayer, Syngenta, FMC. They're buying these biological, or as I like to call them, natural product companies because they see that as the wave of the future. Around the world, just ask yourself, do people want more pesticides? Do people want more biotech traits? No and no. So what people are looking for is things that already exist in the environment that we can take them out of wherever they're at now and use those in our crops and have some beneficial gain. That's what we're talking about here. 2019 is one of those years where I expect products like this to show even more promise because in many situations we had soils that were waterlogged for a long time. So microbial life may not be as vibrant as we'd like to have it. And adding some of these products, if they're the right ones to help our crops, could certainly show a good benefit out there. Because plants are under stress. Yeah, plants have been under stress and we're trying to reduce that stress by getting our plants and the environment working together a little better. So in furrow and on seed treatment, they're the two best places I see putting these types of products out. Uh, things like NutriCycle that we've talked about over the years. Uh, Decomp is another product that we've used for composting manure, but we're also seeing some pretty good gains on that when used in furrow or in a two by two, just improving, putting a lot of beneficial microbes in close proximity to our root systems. The other thing when Darren mentioned that Decomp, what we're experimenting with is that we're able to break down crop residue for a lot of these people who are in no-till or reduced till, they're finding so much residue. Like even where we're at right here, this was a continuous cornfield. Okay, what happens in continuous corn very often in the northern United States? Well, the ground's too cold in the spring. Why? Because there was too much residue still sitting from last year. If we can turn that residue into the nutrients that it really is, break it down a little faster, well, now we have warmer soil, we have more nutrients for the next crop. It's a good thing. So that's what we're working on with the decomp product. When we get into the mid-season, some of the things that we're doing is trying to drive more nutrition into our plants and trying to keep our plants healthy. One of the products that we've been talking about at the Ag PhD Field Day now the last couple of summers, we've shown some trial work there, is a product called Nutex EDA. The EDA stands for Enzyme Driven Activity, which again, like Brian said, I don't know, it sounds like something that, that isn't going to work. It really actually does. And when we put that with any foliar nutrition product we're putting out there, we're driving it into that plant quicker and we're seeing better gains. A new one we're experimenting with on our farm and at the Ag PhD research site this year is N Hydro. And the purpose of that is you spray it on crops and supposedly the crop's gonna produce some of its own nitrogen. We're gonna have more nitrogen in the plant. So I'm really interested to see with our tissue test results and then obviously with yield when we get to the end of the season, if that pans out. Well, it's been a dream for many years, right? If our crops could just produce more of their own nitrogen, we wouldn't have to apply so much. Or if we get this great growing season and now, oh, it's too late to put fertility out. Well, hey, no big deal. The plant can produce more of what it needs to really get those high yields. Darren, how about Boost 10? 
Well, Boost 10 is one that we've been trying now for a couple of years and we've seen some really nice results. The, the sales pitch is, well, you're going to improve plant health, but the real story behind it is there's amino acids in there, some of which your plants don't naturally produce. If we get those out there in the plants, we can help that plant start metabolizing things and growing actually a little faster. It was a nice product early in the season in 2019 to really help jumpstart some of these fields that were really behind, but it's also something mid-season that we're seeing some gains on the last couple of years as well, so we're doing more work with Boost 10 this year. So there are a lot of these biological, natural products. We also talk a lot about plant growth hormones, gibberellic acid, super important in pastures when it's cold. We talk about mega grow as a safener for Roundup and just helping with those plant growth hormones so the plant can recover quicker, the crop can recover quicker. There are a lot of different things that we would just encourage you try on your farm. We're not saying go all acres or anything like that, but you gotta experiment a little bit so you find out what works on a small scale and when it works on a small scale, then be using it many more acres on your farm. Well, one thing that you want to make sure that you stop on your farm, we talk about all the good things, one thing you want to get rid of is our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? You're invited to attend the free Ag PhD Field Day, Thursday, July 25th. Hi, I'm Darren Hefty. Our event gets bigger and better every year, and for 2019, we have even more valuable information for your farm. This year, we feature guided tours of more than 100 Ag PhD field trials, highlighting the latest in technology, seed, crop protection, and fertilizer. Plus, you can see high yield panels with 15 yield champions in corn, soybeans, wheat, barley, milo, and sunflowers. And see the plots that each of those farmers are managing right here on our site. And this year's field day will have more equipment to show than ever. In addition to the larger ride and drive and field demo areas, we're introducing another huge area called Pathway to Precision, where you can see the latest in equipment options for your farm. We also have great facilities, awesome food, activities for kids, live entertainment, and more. Come to the Ag PhD Field Day, where top farmers meet, Thursday, July 25th in Baltic, South Dakota. Please register at agphd.com. Out here, Great yield starts with great weed control. That's why I choose the Roundup Ready Extend crop system, the system that makes the difference. Because only I know what it takes out here. Yield's what it's all for. But keeping my fields clean all season, that's what it's all about. This is my field. Do you feel like there's never enough time to get everything done before planting? The window for spring work is quick and unforgiving. Give yourself the upper hand with the ProTail High Performance High Speed Disc. More and more farmers agree the ProTail is the right tool for spring field conditions and heavy residue management. Zero maintenance bearings, independent disc technology, oversized pins and bushings allow the ProTail to handle whatever field or conditions you can throw at it. Degelman High Performance Equipment. At Estes Performance Concaves, we know how valuable your time is at harvest. That's why we designed the new XPR Concave System. The XPR System is the number one performance concave system on the market, surpassing the rest in both speed and efficiency, ensuring every last grain from your field gets into your tank. Plus, XPR Concaves work for all row crops. No more changing concaves, meaning you have less downtime. Take back your bushels this harvest. Get Estes Performance Concaves in your combine today. Weed of the Week is a winter annual, it's Downy Brome. Now, if you're a small grain producer, this is one of your worst nightmares that you get Downy Brome across your acres. If you're raising corn and soybeans, you're probably like, what's the big deal? I use Roundup Ready crops or Liberty Link crops, so many different crops out there. We can control Downy Brome, but when you're in a grass crop, it gets to be a lot more difficult. Yeah, and the reason why we're talking about this today is just so you're prepared come fall. If you've had downy brome before, you probably know it's showing up again this year. So what should you do? Well, here's our advice. If I'm in wheat, I'm winter wheat, I'm gonna start with probably prepare pre-emerge. Now, prepare isn't perfect, but it's cheap, and I like cheap. I also like the fact that it has activity on some broad leaves in addition to grass. Prepare is an ALS herbicide, and the problem with all these downy brome products that we're gonna use in the fall, they're all ALS. I look at Olympus, I look at Powerflex. Uh, maybe you wanna go out there with Outrider, it used to be called Maverick. All those things are pretty decent. I'd say Outrider's probably the best, but it has the longest carryover. 
PowerFlex has the least amount of carryover, might be the worst of those choices, but still you could double up and basically you could go prepare pre, you could come with PowerFlex after that. All right, that's great, but here's the big thing, Brand. You've got to do a treatment in the fall. If you wait until spring, you're probably just hoping for suppression. If you want control, get those fall treatments out there. Yeah, and like I say, it certainly could be two treatments. Now, here's one other thing that I would throw out at you. You could get some Zidua, or let's say it's Anthem Flex that contains Zidua. That's a group 15, not going to be perfect on downy brome, but at least you got a different mode of action. How I would suggest using that is very late pre or early post. In the spring, a couple of good options are Gold Sky and Open Sky that have some power flex in there, but again, safened. If, if we're going to use this in the spring, you've got to use those safened versions, number one, and I really like those fall treatments. I can't say that enough. Well, you have to use those safened versions for spring wheat. For winter wheat, that's where the Power Flex, yes, you can spray Power Flex on winter wheat anytime you want. But the big thing, whenever we start talking about these residual grass herbicides, really look at what are you gonna rotate to, that's a big deal. All right, our weed of the week is downy brome. Again, in the cereal crops, that's where you're gonna have the most problem in corn and soybeans where you have Roundup Ready and Liberty Link options. We can really get it under control pretty easily with those products. Well, that's it for our weed of the week, but stay tuned, Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. Because Case IH offered the first five axle design to give you more power to the ground, with less berming and compaction, all to help you be more productive. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, we'd be blushing. After planting into some of the coldest conditions we've ever planted into this year, it's almost hard to believe that now it's just too warm for human comfort. In today's Iron Talk, we'll talk about the cooling system in your tractor. Once it gets hot outside, we start to realize how spoiled we are with air-conditioned tractor caps. While we're pretty lucky to have air conditioning, it doesn't do you much good if it's not working. Here are a few simple maintenance tips to help you keep cool this summer. First of all, here's what you should expect from the air conditioning unit in your tractor. In most tractors, the air conditioning system is capable of cooling up to a maximum of 30 degrees Fahrenheit off the air temperature. If a particular day has highs in the 80s, well, no problem. You can cool your cab down into the 50s if you'd like. However, those days when the air temperature rises into the upper 90s or even 100 degrees, you're going to need to consider your cooling system's capabilities before you call the service shop. Temperatures in the upper 70s may be all you can expect inside your cab those days. If your cooling system isn't even achieving that, then you can turn to these maintenance items that may improve performance. The first thing I'd look at is the air conditioner's condenser. Watch for bent or dirty fins. Depending on the make and model of the tractor that you're working on, inspecting the condenser may be a simple job. If cleaning is necessary, use an air compressor rather than a power washer. High pressure water spray can easily bend fins, which in turn adds to more problems. Also, water can build up, leading to potential corrosion issues as well. There are obviously many more potential problems that could lead to poor cooling with your air conditioner. Just have realistic expectations that your air conditioner can only take off 20 or 30 degrees. And if it's not even doing that, check the things you can, like the condenser, and then talk to your local equipment dealer for more tips on keeping your tractor cab cool this summer. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. That's all the time we have for today's show, but if you're looking for more agronomic information, we'd encourage you to check out the Ag PhD Insider magazine. Just go to agphdinsider.com. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have a Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.